So at last, the first big set piece of the election. One of the two men arriving at Sky Studios will surely be our next Prime Minister. No preamble, Jeremy Paxman wasn't hanging around. How's this for a first question? David Cameron, do you know how many food banks there were in this country when you came to power? I don't have the exact figures, but I know that usage of food banks has gone up. Overwhelmed. Rattled? You bet he was. How much money have you borrowed? Well, we have cut the budget deficit in half as a share no, of GDP. How much GDP. money have you borrowed? Well, uh, look, the key thing is the amount of money you borrow every year, the deficit. Do you know what it is? That is down in half. I know that we have borrowed a lot of money because... This was way out of the comfort zone. And talk about zero-hours contracts only piled on the agony. Could you live on one? No, I, look, some, as I said, Could some you people... Could you live on one? Well, uh, you have to, I want to create a country where more people have the opportunity of the full-time work that they want. Could you live on a zero-hours contract? Well, look, it's not, that's not the question. The PM did manage to get into his stride after a while. It has been difficult. We've had a very yeah. difficult few years following the longest and deepest recession uh, virtually in our country's history. Now, we're coming out of that. The studio audience format that followed is much more up David Cameron's street. For example, this could have been tricky. Prime Minister, what do you think are Ed Miliband's best qualities? But the Prime Minister took the heat out of the situation. Uh, look, I think all of us who put ourselves forward all actually believe in serving the public, in trying to do the right thing. And so he clawed it back, still a rueful-looking David Cameron at the end, knowing this was not a vintage performance. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Next up, where the Prime Minister had been tense, Ed Miliband, hand in pocket and all, seemed not to be. Let's turn this country into a country where, if you work month after month, year after year, you don't end up on a zero-hours contract, but you have a legal right to a regular contract. That's just one of the changes that I would make. We can do a lot better than this. We're a great country. OK, let's whiz through these two, shall we? Oh, first round of applause. Um, the mood had lifted, but there were tricky issues. This one, the trickiest of all. Do you not think that your brother would have done a better job? Oh. He... Hold on. Hold on. Look, it, was a, it was a difficult contest between me and David, uh, and it was a bruising contest. Why did I stand? I thought somebody needed to lead the Labour Party who could move us on from New Labour. I wonder, though, uh, Mr Miliband, what, what regrets do you have about creating such division in your family? It's hard. Well, it's hard. I'll make no bones about it. It's hard. In what way is it hard? Well, because it was bruising. Uh, I mean, you know, it was bruising for me, it was bruising for David. It, it's, it's healed, or healing, I would say. When it came to the one-on-one -on -one interview, the Miliband policy was to concede some ground on immigration. When your party was last in government, it got immigration completely wrong. Sure. On spending? The dome was not a good example of the way, of the way money is spent. But then to get on the offensive. Don't be so presumptuous. You've got six weeks to go. You've got six weeks to go. You don't get to decide the election results six weeks before the general election. You're important, Jeremy, but not that important. It's the British, I don't want, it's the British I don't, people. It's the British I don't people. want to decide it. No, come on. The most telling section was about whether Ed Miliband has the steel for the top job. But am I tough enough? I'm tough enough? Hell yes, I'm tough enough. You think... Um... Could that be parodied in the days ahead? Hell yes. But Ed Miliband had the air of a man demanding to be taken seriously. And I've been underestimated at every turn. People said I wouldn't become leader, and I did. People said four years ago, he can't buy, become Prime Minister. I think I can. You're saying I can't win a majority. I think I can. In short, game on. Don't forget the context to this event. For all that the two parties are locked together in the polls, when you ask people which leader they approve of, David Cameron is way out front. So the job for Ed Miliband was to demonstrate that he personally is going to be at the races in this campaign. And he did that. Meanwhile, the other party leaders, any of whom could have a key role to play in the weeks ahead, will be champing at the bit for their own moment under the studio lights. Joey Jones, Sky News.